and welcome back to Star News. As we join you with breaking news, folks, this is a first for us. We have a presidential candidate on the set with us, and uh, I want to welcome you, uh, Mr. Virgil Good, and uh, very glad to have you in the studio with us this evening. Scott, it's great to be with you. Always uh, glad for the opportunity to be on Star News. I almost called you Senator there. We're so used to That's all right. saying that. <laughs> I could be president, though, in the, uh, in the future. What on earth possessed you to run for president? Looking at the major parties, the Democrats and the Republicans, they were not addressing, in my opinion, some of the issues that are vital to the future of this country. First of all, we need a balanced budget now, not 10 years down the road or not even five years down the road. Tough choices have to be made. We've got to do that now. And in, now, let's in, talk a little bit about the candidates, the other candidates, if you will. Sure. Uh, what, what is your assessment of President Obama and the job that he's done over the last few years? I've been very much disappointed in how much debt that he has rung up for this country. He has rung up almost $5 trillion in debt. His budgets have not been balanced. The budget that he submitted to Congress recently was $1.3 trillion in deficit. Uh, the Paul Ryan Republican budget, which passed the House, was over $600 billion in deficit. Again, if you're going to address the debt problem, you've got to stop, uh, you've got to stop deficits. You cannot have uh, 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 deficits uh, in the neighborhood of 600,000, I mean 600 billion to uh, 1.3 trillion. And then on, on the jobs front, uh, the unemployment rate in this country at uh, a level of 8.2 percent, which is what just announced last Friday, is far too high. And I have called for a moratorium on green card issuances, except for a few minor exceptions, such as a fiancé visa, or for someone that had the aptitude or the expertise of a Warner Von Braun. We should not be allowing so many persons with green cards, which means they can go to work, get any job they want into the country when we have such high unemployment. And I've called for a moratorium on uh, green card issuances with a few minor exceptions. And of course, neither President Obama nor uh, candidate Romney uh, have done that. They disagree with that approach. Uh, they really want more immigration, not less. And I am one that firmly believes that we have a far too liberal legal immigration policy and also the illegal immigration must stop. We're talking about, uh, let's talk about economic policy in general for a moment. I hear the uh, argument sometimes, and, and there is some credence to this, I think, that you know, Democrats and Republicans nowadays don't really seem to disagree that much on the fundamental issues. A lot of the uh, arguing, the banter, if you will, is more or less window dressing, but they, they all seem to agree on the same sort of free trade agreements, they call them, right. and, and much the same economic policy. Uh, what is your take on that? Is there a fundamental difference anymore between the two major parties? There are, with some in the Republican Party, it's uh, a, a good deal of difference. But with most, there's not a good deal of difference. Uh, you mentioned trade agreements. I, in Congress, I was always an opponent of CAFTA, uh, MFN with China, PNTR with China, and in the Virginia Senate, I sponsored a resolution to oppose NAFTA. Yet you had uh, uh, Democrats, then it was President Clinton and uh, Congressman L.F. Payne supporting NAFTA. We should have opposed NAFTA. Uh, Ross Perot was certainly right when he said NAFTA was a giant sucking sign with the loss of jobs, and that's true. You cannot continue to have free trade that adversely impacts manufacturing. We need to work with manufacturing and be pro-manufacturing in this country and not give away manufacturing jobs in trade agreements. And so that's the difference between uh, myself and uh, uh, Governor Romney and President Obama. Both of them have supported uh, certain free trade agreements, and uh, they have not done anything to retrench uh, from NAFTA. And as I mentioned before, another big difference is uh, on a moratorium on green card immigration. And on illegal immigration, if you don't do away with the magnets, such as uh, allowing automatic birthright citizenship 
to uh, the children of illegals born into this country. Uh, you're going to have that as a big magnet. It's a big magnet to be able to go to the public schools without having to produce proof of citizenship or legal standing in this country. Huge impact, huge cost on our education system, uh, huge cost on social services. Most persons, uh, uh, if they uh, are a child of illegals, they're going to be eligible for Medicaid, food stamps, uh, public assistance, and probably public housing. And the taxpayers pay for this. Uh, we can't have a balanced budget with open borders. Hmm. Uh, let's talk about uh, perhaps uh, uh, Mitt Romney for just a moment. I saw no. something interesting uh, recently where I believe former President Bill Clinton described uh, Mitt Romney as a successful businessman. I uh, was somewhat surprised to hear him make that comment. Uh, would you agree with that assessment? And, and do you think, is there some ulterior motive behind him saying this? I, well, I, don't, I certainly can't speak for President Clinton and an ulterior motive, but I would certainly uh, uh, believe that uh, President Clinton was not on message with President Obama when he made that statement. And, and I'd have to say, I, I, you'd have to weigh what you mean by success. He was certainly a success in uh, making money for Bain Capital and those investors in those groups. Uh, was he successful with every business that he redone? I don't know that I would agree that he was. I, that, uh, with any, any types of businesses, you have ebbs and flows, but uh, uh, I'm sure there were some who may have lost their jobs as, as, as uh, companies downsized uh, would not say that uh, Romney was a good business person. I guess what, uh, what you're here tonight to let people know or remind them of is you do have an alternative. I think a lot of times people get locked into this thing, well, I've got to vote Democrat or I've got to vote Republican, but that's not the case. There are several alternatives, and you represent one such alternative. Uh, that's correct. Uh, I'm the nominee of the Constitution Party. We're already on the ballot in 17 states, including uh, states like Ohio, uh, Michigan, Missouri. Uh, we're also on in Florida, and we're working hard. Uh, I, I was supposed to be in California this week, and the AIP convention has been moved to August, so I'm now uh, personally getting signatures because we need to get 10,000 petition signatures in Virginia to get on the ballot. We've got to have 10,000 registered voters. And I've been uh, knocking on doors and uh, going places in Martinsville and Henry County today to get those signatures. And now, so that uh, the voters who are, who are interested in voting for you, so they don't get confused, you are a representative of the Constitutional Party, but I believe you'll be appearing as an independent candidate in Virginia. Is that correct? That, that, you're exactly right. Uh, we will be listed on the line on all the voting machines on the independent line because you're getting on by petition. Mm -hmm. uh, the uh, Democrats and Republican candidates get on by nomination process and then they submit papers to the State Board of Elections to be on the ballot. We have to submit uh, not only the names of electors, but we also have got to submit the petitions signed by 10,000 registered voters in Virginia. One of the, uh, the big hurdles, uh, I suppose, to getting elected nowadays, something you hear talked about all the time, and it seems to grow with each election, is the sheer cost involved to be elected to any major office, particularly the President of the United States. Um, what are your plans to get over some of those hurdles to raise enough money to be able to run your campaign effectively? We, we will never match Obama nor Romney in raising money. They are focused on big donors. Uh, I think yesterday, President Obama had <coughs> several million dollar plus fundraisers in the New York area, including some with President Clinton. I know the George Clooney event for President Obama raked in more than 15 million. One of the problems with politics today, particularly at the national level and even at the state level, uh, you could see some of the state races last fall locally that for a state legislative seat were going uh, on both sides in excess of a million dollars. I'm not taking uh, PAC money, no individual donations, 
over $200, between two and 200. Uh, persons, if they want to make a donation, can go to our website, goodforpresident2012.com, and uh, contribute by PayPal. Uh, so we're not going to have the money any way, shape, or form like uh, Obama or Romney. But if you want a true difference, and that is a true difference, uh, if you want a grassroots candidate, I'm your candidate because, like I say, we are not, we're not uh, raising PAC money and we're limiting individual donations except for myself and maybe a few immediate family members to $200. Tell us, uh, in your words, what would, if you were elected president, what would your first 90 days in office be like? What would you go after first and foremost? Well, you would, you got to focus on the economy and jobs. I would do all that I could to reduce uh, job competitors coming across our borders. I would also work hard to become energy independent. I would pr be in favor of drilling off our coast, especially off Virginia, where the General Assembly has adopted that position, uh, allowing more drilling in the Gulf. Uh, I would be for the pipeline from Canada to Texas and opening up our energy resources in this country so we would be energy independent. And uh, I would also submit a balanced budget. And that would cause, uh, that would cause some pain because uh, you, you've got to totally eliminate foreign aid except to the amount that have to be done pursuant to a treaty until you could change that. But we spend tens of billions every year on foreign assistance. And when I was in Congress, one of the things that most upset and disturbed me was the refusal of some of the Republican leadership to really go after uh, foreign aid. And that's just one. I mean, you'd have to cut out uh, funding for uh, line items like uh, Planned Parenthood. La Raza would get zero. And uh, I could go right on down the line. Uh, Department of Agriculture would have to be cut. Uh, I'm pro a strong defense, but you can't get to a balanced budget unless you uh, cut defense. Rather than increasing defense spending, you would have to uh, 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 decrease it somewhat. Uh, every agency in the area of education, I was an opponent of No Child Left Behind. That program needs to be totally eliminated. And having the federal government so much involved in secondary education is wrong. Secondary education should be up to the states and the localities. And uh, uh, the federal government's burdens cost localities. And then, uh, but they do, the federal funding would have to be shifted away too. Many economists claim that uh, the globalization uh, is irreversible. It's uh, destined to happen. It's, it's already too far along, and uh, it's it's bound to continue. Uh, they seem to say that the kind of model we have now, where labor uh, goes to the cheapest market, if you will, is just the way things are. What do you say to people who feel that way? What what can be done to bring jobs back to America? I think we're really doing the wrong thing to say that we have to be a globalist nation and do what everyone else in the world is doing. Uh, that's, that we could end up easily like uh, Greece or Spain if we don't stop the deficits and start reducing our debt. And if you've got a globalist view, you just, it's kind of like, well, things are going to work out down the road. Well, you can't have open borders, letting everyone in, uh, spending so much around the world in all these different countries, and having a huge global uh, presence. We've got to retrench and focus on getting the United States healthy and its economy uh, from within. Now, I'm not against trade, but it needs to be on a fair basis where we're not uh, selling out manufacturing. All right. Well, uh, former Senator Virgil Goode, we thank you for being with us this evening. It's a pleasure always to speak with you, and uh, we wish you the best. And, you know, we, we remind people it's been a while now, but there have been several Virginians who have been elected president. Maybe it's time for one more. Thank you, Scott. All right, folks. Stay with us. We'll take a brief break. Be back with more here on Star News 
in just a moment.